Well, the sound that you heard at the very beginning of this video is probably one of my first ever sonic memories. Um, because I, I believe the first time I ever took a long distance train um, back in the Soviet Union when I was where I was born was oh Jesus in 1982 I was just nine months old I guess and um, I can't even tell you how many times I've traveled um, in, in my country in Soviet Union and then in Russia um, like hundreds I'm not exaggerating that's probably hundreds of thousands of kilometers if not more and uh, my country has one of the most extensive and uh, developed systems of long-distance uh, railways so no wonder that when I moved to Argentina it was one of my you know bucket list items to take one of the long-distance trains well hopefully more than one but so far it's just been this one um, from Buenos Aires to Córdoba and well from the capital of the country to the second largest city in the country, the capital of the province of the same name. Um, Argentinian railroads used to be um, a glorious, um, well-developed, super extensive um, system um, of independent railway companies and eventually it was nationalized in 1948 then then privatized and then renationalized it's like it's it's too long a story to tell so um the bottom line is right now unfortunately there are just uh, three or four long distance lines uh this one well I, here i am already in the car um it's a sleeping car and the the these cars are relatively new they were made in in china uh what is it and um yeah i think they've they've been um in use since 2017 18 roughly so they're really really new and you can see that um really comfortable air conditioned clean the service is wonderful um it wasn't that difficult to to get a ticket it used to be more difficult before it's like really it was a big deal now just if you're buying a month in advance um, it's pretty realistic to get a good ticket to the only sleeping car in this train um, the trip takes um, roughly 22 hours well 21 22 hours and um, to cross the distance of just um, I guess like 400 miles that would be 650 kilometers um, more or less why so long you would ask well there are quite a few reasons for that um, the let's say uh, the condition of the rails and of the infrastructure um, and some security issues and etc 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 so basically the most part of the of the way the train is going at like 25 30 miles an hour so um, well this is the car um, the boarding was taking place at an at, at an unusual location because this is like an auxiliary platform adjacent to the slums because uh, the 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 main platform um, which is in one of the most beautiful train stations in the world Retiro Mitre uh, was under reconstruction so unfortunately we uh, had to board. Um, here which is very unremarkable to say the least and once i get on the other side of the train and i film a little bit there you're actually going to see that well you're going to see the slums okay not the most pleasant sight well um the boarding was really you know fast comfortable um the the personnel were very nice um very helpful uh, helping people with directions or you know with the information they needed with the, with their luggage well it's argentina as you can see so everybody's playing soccer <laughs> um and who whoever is not playing soccer is playing uh rugby or tennis so yeah 
it was um it was fall april is fall it was like the, the at the end of the first autumn month um i guess it was well what was it april 12th was when i left uh, buenos aires so it was just um, a weekend trip basically it wasn't as much to get to know cordoba as well but rather it was a you know it was for the sake of taking this train uh, ride because that was my dream come true so i took this train friday night saturday afternoon i arrived and sunday afternoon i take i took the train back so monday morning i was back to buenos aires and back at work um anyway um, as we're leaving uh, buenos aires uh, for quite a while they're going to be seeing a lot of the um, the suburbs and then the outskirts of the city and then a little bit of the country well it's gonna be dark like some of this video is really gonna be dark the second and third especially the third part is really gonna be beautiful with this sunset and with the you know with the landscapes of um, of Argentina and Pampa etc etc this one's gonna be more like the you know overview of the train I'm gonna walk through the train and show you the other cars and the other um, classes there because this would be like, you know, equivalent to first class, I guess. Uh, the tickets are really not expensive if you're, you know, counting in, in dollars. At that time, that was, oh man, it's like 50 bucks, was it? Yeah, it's not like 50 bucks one way. And when you're, you know, when you're paying this, um, you're actually buying out the entire compartment. So you're not just paying for your bed, or well, for your seat for a bed in this case, you're paying for the entire compartment um, where two people can travel. So if you're traveling with someone, that's, you know, the price includes two. So I was traveling alone, um, and so, well, I had to, I had to pay for the whole compartment. And um, anyway, like I said, I'm going to walk through the train a little bit. I'm going to also show you... Um, what you can get in the you know in the dining car and um, well comment on the prices and on the whole process of buying the ticket that was pretty pretty easy uh, you can buy them online obviously I since I I used to travel regularly um, I used to commute from that station to um, one of my students one of my clients in in, in the suburbs so um, I would uh, just stop by and check out the schedules and prices there at the at the you know the box office, and I I asked them whether any tickets were available for the upcoming month, and they were, and so I just uh, went ahead and I and I bought my ticket. Um, well, like a month in advance, like I said, I will explain why. So in Argentina, if you're traveling long distance, most people, like the, the most, obviously the cheapest way to travel is by bus, okay? So there are also some airlines, there are a couple of low costs that are really not that low costs if you're not Argentinian, if, you're, if you have a foreign passport, that's really gonna be pretty, pretty pricey, I have to say. So um, train is like the, the, the other cheapest option. Actually, that's even cheaper than the bus. So uh, that's why people, you know, especially before um, there was this revolution of low costs uh, like three years ago, um, you had to really like fight for those tickets. People would reserve them months in advance especially the sleeping car because uh, they're really inexpensive and for the service uh, they offer and for for the you know the kind of car you're traveling in it's really it's quite a bargain so people would really like fight for it i didn't have to thank god so it was like i said it was pretty easy i just went right ahead you will have to um to present your id and you'll have to board with the same id that you presented at the box office um there are some guidelines as per your security and safety um well safety is quite an issue in the in, in, in the city of buenos aires and generally in argentina but specifically in the city of buenos aires so you have to be really careful when before boarding and like when you when you're boarding like in those areas also occasionally i've been told and I actually i even saw the 
um, a couple of a couple of <laughs> evidences of that. That uh, in some areas uh, people throw stones at the trains. So you know that doesn't happen as often as it used to. It's more like an, an exception these days. But still, it can it can happen. Okay. I love this country to pieces. I'm I live here now. It's like my second home, etc. So whatever warning I'm giving you, whatever criticism that you're about to hear is not I just want you to understand that it's not coming from any place of arrogance. <laughs> um but rather just to, you know, to give you a heads up to to help you have the best time possible in Buenos Aires in Argentina. So if you are into trains, railroads, and if you want to travel by train, then well, uh, listen, listen up. <laughs> um, well, as as like I've said, it's like where we're still leaving the, the city of, um, of Buenos Aires. And uh, we are still in the city, we're not even, uh, we haven't even left the administrative district of Buenos Aires. So Buenos Aires, is uh, the name we associate with the capital, but um, um, actually, well, it's it's sort of similar to the way it is in the United States, where Washington D.C. Well, the D.C. District Columbia is like a the 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 separate entity, like the the autonomous thing. Same way, uh, the city of Buenos Aires is uh, is is an autonomous city, so it's usually referred to as Caba, C A B A. Ciudad Autónoma de Buenos Aires, uh, Autonomous City of Buenos Aires. So also province is the name, uh, sorry, Buenos Aires is also the name of the province, which is the largest uh, and most populous um, province in, in Argentina, with around, I believe, 17 million people. And the capital city of La Plata, which is roughly 50, 55 kilometers to the south of Buenos Aires, southwest of Buenos Aires. Um, anywho, um, here we are. We're actually riding through. You cannot see it now. You will. You might see it in in the last part of 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 the video. Um, we're driving through one of the best um, suburbs, like most prestigious and you know uh, pricey uh, upper upper middle class suburbs of Buenos Aires, and uh, well. Since it's getting darker and darker, and there is not much to shoot, as you can see, um, I'm about to um, set off on the train tour. So I'm just gonna walk through the train and and show you uh, what kind of cars uh, are available. Uh, they're just well, they, they there's one that's called like I think third class or tourist or something like that. There's also Pullman. I couldn't see much difference. Probably the you know the quality of the seats, um, and then you have the the sleeper, uh, the sleeping car. Um, so the train um, had just like I think it's like six or seven cars in total with the dining car. Also, there's there's like a luggage and um, and post car, and also I guess there's like a security thing. Um, yeah, there's security traveling with the train, obviously. Uh, the train makes a few stops, but very, very few, I have to say. It makes a stop in in the city of Rosario, which is the, the largest city in the province of Santa Fe, and also, the, you know, the motherland of the infamous Che Guevara. So whoever is interested in, in that guy, well, we're going to be riding through his town, um, hometown. And, well, and then basically it gets into the province of Córdoba, and and well, a few hours later, here we are in um, in Cordoba, the city, which is beautiful. I have to say, really, 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 really beautiful. So we're still in Buenos Aires, though, and we're gonna be for a few more minutes, um, I guess. So. Um, uh, what can I say? Um, I already mentioned safety, and I think it's important to address this um, pink elephant um, in the room. Well, I mean, guard your belongings, you know, be careful, 
uh, try to 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 not really walk alone late at night. Um, if if you're being mugged, um, just like give in. Don't well, don't resist because it's you know general. Well, there's a lot of violence. There's a lot of cruelty in in you know, well you know. Uh, don't want to say <laughs> any anything more because you know it's, uh, bad things can happen to you if you're not careful enough. So just use your common sense. Don't do crazy things. Um, don't walk alone late at night. Uh, look around. You know, try to figure out what kind of neighborhood you're in. As you know, what kind of people are around you, if any, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you'll be just fine. Uh, for the most part, in like central parts of the city, you know, in, in, in broad daylight, it's, it's not that likely that something like that's going to happen. Um, well, if you've ever traveled to South America and you've been to Rio, for instance, well, it's not as bad as in Rio, they say, but close enough. So make your conclusions. However, the further you're getting away from the capital city, the safer the country becomes and like the, the difference is quite drastic in some cases like we're going from oh my god you know you're, you're going to get robbed and like you have a 50 50 chance pretty much of being robbed and then to um, places where people don't even lock their doors so that is like the the gap um, the you know between um the regions and the capital city. Well, and well, what else can I say? As far as the transportation, I've already mentioned trains, um, I've already mentioned um, airplanes and uh, buses. Well, in the city of Buenos Aires, there's the subway. There are buses, obviously. Well, here I am. I've started my walk through. We're still <laughs> in greater Buenos Aires. And here I am, getting through the train. Here are some guys from the crew. I don't know why this, like, there was no one in that car. I think the tickets were not even sold there because it's, it was empty both ways. Uh, well, here you can see people traveling and you can draw your conclusions. And here I am entering the dining car. The biggest surprise of all, probably, on this trip was <laughs> the, um, <laughs> were the prices, really, um, in this dining car. Because a lot of the things in Buenos Aires are really expensive and overpriced, believe you me. Um, not that you're, when, you, when, you know, when you're traveling, obviously you're going to be traveling with US dollars or euros or whatever, you know, whatever it is, you're going to be fine. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to give you the prices because that's 2019. Things have changed. There's a lot of inflation here, blah, blah, blah. Devaluate, you know, devaluation of local currency, la, 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 la. It doesn't matter. So at the time, um, well, the things that I ordered here, unfortunately, the kitchen was not working, you know, on that particular trip. They said it was temporary. So technically, you can order like a hot meal, like a real hot meal but I just ordered two um, Milanese sandwiches which is like some chopped breaded meat uh, they're hot sandwiches so I ordered two sandwiches which were okay you know nothing how but well um, well 7-up uh, tea and alfajor which is like a, a traditional Argentinian cookie and all of that was like two well you're gonna see the actually you're gonna see the receipt so it's less than 300 pesos like 280 something something uh to give you an idea that it, to for me to get the exact same things in the city of buenos aires at that time would have cost like 700 pesos Yes. Well, the sign, don't get confused, it's not a dollar sign here in this receipt, it's the Argentinian peso sign, obviously. Um, like I said, you know, that's that's not a, a, a Michelin restaurant, it's, it's a diner. 
uh, the dining car. So some people just stop by to get some hot water for their mates. If you don't know mates, like this Argentinian, Paraguayan, uh, Uruguayan, Brazilian traditional herbal drink, um, hot drink. It's like a, it, it's a kind of tea, uh, much healthier than tea actually. And some people just get here to get some hot water. You know, they just uh, put some hot water into their thermos and and they just sit around, have a nice conversation, um, sip their mate, uh, look through the window, listen to you know to the sound of the train. It's it's nice. I think um, train. It's like the ultimately romantic way to travel um, without necessarily because. You know, like if you're traveling, like I don't know, on a cruise liner, right? This is like it's your intention to make it like romantic or um, to have some kind of a extraordinary um, deluxe experience, whatever. But if you're traveling by train, you're not necessarily uh, you're not necessarily doing that, you know, specifically <laughs> uh, to do something romantic or cool. But it, it just is by the nature of it. It's, it's really, it's, you know, ultimately it's a very romantic experience. So if you are traveling with your, um, with your partner, and I really recommend it. Well, here you can see the prices. I mean, forget the prices because in Argentina, you know, they change that like on a weekly basis, best case scenario. So um, I just uh, filmed it for, you know, for the archives, <laughs> uh, for the sake of history. And well, here we are, it's night. Uh, the speed is pretty decent here because they, they did a lot of um, maintenance work and reconstruction work between um, Buenos Aires and Rosario. And then after that, between Rosario and Cordoba, there are, you know, it's just gonna be super slow. Like there were, there were times that there were cows, you know, um, walking alongside the train that were walking faster than the train, I swear. So <laughs> that is not the case right now. Um, like, well, it's sick as you can see, it's air conditioned. Unfortunately, um, I don't know why, but they disabled thermostats um, in each compartment because originally each compartment has its own thermostat so it can regulate the airflow and the temperature but god knows why uh, they disabled them so um, i have no clue why that happened um but it's i mean it's comfortable the the temperature was comfortable it was a little bit too too cold for me like but I, you know i'm a special case i really don't like it cold or chilly i need to be comfortable so i have to use the blanket to to block out part of the airflow coming out of the ac um, and it was just perfect just perfect i didn't block it like entirely block it out just you know covered it up a little bit well here we are i'm going to be walking through this empty car here it is it's kind of surreal because it's like empty it was weird. I was standing in the middle of this car, like with no passengers, and it felt like I was on an abandoned train, totally alone. Well, as you can see, there's like, there's a cooler, the water dispenser, so you can get the water, hot and cold. Um, the bathrooms, which I believe I haven't, yeah, no, yeah, I didn't film them. So, um, the bathrooms are clean. Um, what else? Well, there are security cameras. Um, well, not much to add. I mean, it's it's just, uh, like I said, it's nice. So you board this train around, well, it's as you can see the time here. Well, whoever, I mean, if you don't know military time, like it's like 10, 23 p.m. Um, and we left Buenos Aires at like 8.30 or 9-ish p.m. And um, we arrived in Cordoba the following day around 4 p.m., 4, 4.30 p.m. So, to give you an idea. Um, what else? 
well, not much. As you can see, it's two plus one here in this abandoned car. And now I'm gonna go back to mine. And um, here we are. As you can see, it's pretty easy to open these doors. You just pull one aside and then the other one does that automatically. So there you go. There you go. And I'm getting back into my car. Well, this is uh, actually, this is that, that stop in Rosario. Uh, it was Rosario Norte, the, the northern station. And uh, uh, you through the window, you can see the strain um, and the, the former, the colors, the color scheme of one of the former um, railway companies. So, you know, uh, it's it's funny because there were so many companies and uh, so many colors that it's it's insane. As you're you know riding past them, it's it's like you're 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 you know uh, turning the pages in the in the book on our Argentinian history of nationalizations and privatizations. It's insane. Well, here I am floating through the midnight train. It was actually not midnight. It was like two or three a.m. Um, well, there it is. That's the that's the car I was traveling in. There you go, emergency exit. Well, here is we can see a few buildings in Rosario and the same um, old train car. And well, here's a train, and we're about yes, uh, we are about to depart, I believe. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. There is something um, very, I mean, this is very special for me, you know, the stations at night, it really brings back a lot of wonderful memories of my childhood when I was travel, when I would travel with my mom or with our family friends who would travel to the south of Russia, to the sea, to the Black Sea resorts. And it would be, you know, the trips would take like two or three days one way, you know, on a train. And um, when it would stop at night, we would, you know, go out to take a breath of fresh air and, you know, the, the just the, the night air and the, the emptiness of those platforms at night and, you know, the train and then getting back in the car and um, looking, looking out of the window at these lights and shadows and, and you know, the dark, the dark of the night that was just... Um, awesome and to listen to that sound and to fall asleep to it uh, being rocked by you know by the train um, I love it I love it I really uh, I feel bad for the people who didn't have those experiences I really highly recommend you um, getting on the train well there we go that's the distance that is the distance between um, Buenos Aires, the city of Buenos Aires, and the city of Cordoba, approximately 650 kilometers. Um, well, um, that was um, um, the first part. There are still a few minutes left. I'm going to show you um, the way the compartment looks at night and uh, would give you just that kind of feel of what it is to fall asleep in a in a sleeping car in Argentina. Um, well, as far as the landscapes, um, please stay tuned and um, watch the second and especially the third parts, well, both second and third parts
parts have a lot of Argentinian landscapes and uh, at the end of the second part there's also going to be a very brief overview of the city of Córdoba at least a couple of its most beautiful sites and um, in the third one there is a magnificent sunset as we're going to be riding through uh, the semi-flooded Pampa uh, which is like the Argentinian prairie just to give you an idea um, well there you go here we are. We're still in Rosario, I believe. Um, we haven't really left it yet. It's still, it's still the city of Rosario. Surreal, because it was like 3 a.m. So, hence no cars, no people, few lights, very few lights, really. So, it's uh, it's really, it's really, it's really fun. It's really fun. I was always wondering and imagining what it's what it's like to be out there. <laughs> what kind of life people live behind those windows with, you know, with lights. Um, I think it triggers some imagination. It's uh, it's a, it's a good way to also reflect um, upon your your life and uh, and dream and and build some plans for the future. Uh, trains are awesome. I, I can't really stress that enough. Trains are awesome. Take a train. If you can, take a train. In the When I was living in the US, well, I, for eight years I was living in the US and I never took any long distance trains. Long distance trains. I only took the uh, regional trains and a lot of local ones in Philadelphia, in New Jersey, in New York. So I, I rode a lot of, um, you know, SEPTA in Philadelphia, New Jersey Transit in New Jersey, uh, in New York, um, New Jersey Transit and Long Island Railroad. So I, I, I did quite a bit of like local and regional, but I never did anything long distance, unfortunately. Um, I still hope I will one day. But in Argentina, I took advantage um, of that opportunity of a couple of days that I had off. And so I, I hopped on the train. Um, well, um, actually speaking of the United States, um, there is something that Argentina and the United States have in common as far as um, railroads, because in both cases, um, they really suffered um, because of the very strong, um, you know, car uh, and truck and lobby. Well, in other words, you know, the, the, the motor vehicle lobby, the, the gas, a lobby and here it was the same you know well here I am looking through the window at night um, and so uh, more focus and more investment uh, was put into you know developing the highways and um, the long distance long distance bus lines and etc etc people here you know there are obviously fewer vehicles here in this country but um, part of the reason of, of, of the decadence of the original uh, system that was that was built by the British and by the French in part um, was exactly that well the development of, of motor vehicles and that kind of industry here in this country it was the unions as well um, the truck driver unions and the, you know the bus driver unions 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 so they basically they they, they killed uh, the railroads at the at the end of the day um, and also obviously the the poor management by the state uh, during the years of nationalization etc etc so all this you know that the traces of this glorious majestic golden age of railroads can still be seen in throughout Argentina in its um, absolutely gorgeous uh, architecturally speaking, in um, uh, train stations like uh, Retiro and Constitución in Buenos Aires, I recommend you to visit them. They're magnificent um, sites, uh, great for you know taking pictures and all. And they're huge; they're really huge. Um, like whole parts of those stations were um, were originally uh, made in Europe, and then transported and assembled in to Buenos Aires and assembled there um, 
during the the brief uh, but truly golden golden age of Argentina at the end of the 19th beginning of the 20th century more or less from like 1890s through you know 1930 ish uh, those 40 45 years they were just the glory of this country it was one of the richest countries in the world and uh, you can still like I said you can still see traces of that um, time of glory and the railroads used to be part of it like Buenos Aires because it's a it's a port it's still an important port um, used to be uh, connected with all the major uh, cities um, in Argentina now it's not the case anymore you can get to Cordoba you can get to Tucumán uh, which also takes approximately a whole day which is at the north of Argentina um, then you can get to uh, Bahia Blanca um, and I think like as far as Buenos Aires is concerned this is it Rosario but that's just like five hours and then there is there is I think uh, there's long distance train um, in Patagonia in Argentina and Patagonia that goes from Viedma to Bariloche uh, that is a dream of mine and also there is a, a unique train which I guess is one of the highest, like altitude-wise, like one of the highest running trains um, in the world, which is it called uh, Train to the Clouds or Train in the Clouds uh, in, in, I guess it's in Jujuy or in Salta, in one of those provinces in the north of Argentina. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the ride. It probably wasn't that um, rich in in the views because it was night but um, please stay with me for part two and part three and part four there's gonna be three more parts especially parts two and three this is where we're gonna see a lot of Argentina through the window because there's gonna be daylight there's gonna be sunsets there's gonna be a lot of good stuff and there's gonna be the city of Cordoba and uh, well that's it for now if you have any questions about I mean traveling to Argentina I don't know when you're watching this whether we're still when you're watching this we're still in this uh, pandemic hell with closed borders and etc etc or you know we, we're out of this by then hopefully um, welcome to Argentina and if you have any questions uh, shoot them uh, if I can help you if I can answer any of them I'd be honored to well enjoy the rest of it and uh, if he, if it's night then uh, don't hesitate to fall asleep to this view and to the sound see you in the next chapter thank you so much for watching